Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're at the Transcatheter Cardiovascular Therapeutics uh, Annual Scientific Session in 2019, uh, live to you from San Francisco and California. I have the absolute honor and pleasure of having with me uh, Dr. Greg Stone. Um, the man needs no introduction. He's the uh, co-director of uh, Transcatheter Cardiovascular Therapeutics meeting. Uh, Dr. Stone, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. Great. Um, so we're going to discuss uh, the findings that you presented at one of the late-breaking clinical trial sessions. Okay. And that was um, the five-year follow-up of the uh, Excel trial. Um, and, you know, it's something which uh, all of us encounter on a day-to-day -day practice uh, as interventionalists and as cardiologists taking care of our patients. So it's, it's very uh, important uh, and it's very relevant and also practice changing. So I'll, I'll uh, let you sure. uh, discuss the findings. Well, as you know, uh, uh, patients with left main coronary disease are some of the highest risk patients we see because of the amount of myocardium subtended by the left main lesion. And traditionally, left main disease has always been managed by surgery for that reason. And, and um, balloon angioplasty and atherectomy and bare metal stents were not very effective. Sure. First generation drug eluting stents made some progress, but now with contemporary drug eluting stents, we thought we could do pretty well compared to surgery. Um, uh, using uh, uh, selected lesion criteria and patient criteria. So we performed the Excel trial, which was a large international um, uh, academic-led study um, organized by an equal number of interventionalists and surgeons. So it was a big hard team approach to make sure that everything was done with contemporary devices, contemporary approaches, best of intervention and best of surgery. Sure. And we randomized 1,905 patients with unprotected left main disease and low or intermediate syntax scores. So uh, either low, basically lower intermediate anatomic complexity beyond the left main. So less than 32. Yeah, less than 32. So the same. most, com less than or equal to 32. Yeah. The most complex patients, the high syntax score patients, we think still should be treated by surgery. But uh, we wanted to test whether everolimus eluting stents, the Zion stent, was now either non-inferior or superior to surgery in syntax score patients less than or equal to 32. Oh. And you need a five-year perspective to really get a good sense of how the outcomes were. And our primary endpoint, importantly, this is the largest left main randomized trial ever done. And so we were powered for a meaningful primary endpoint of death, stroke, or large myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. And at the end of five years, overall the rates were approximately 20% in both arms, um, and there was not statistically significant differences in those two rates. But we did see differences in the um, event rates over time. Within the first 30 days, the PCI procedure was much safer than mm -hmm. the surgical procedure, especially mm -hmm. because of fewer large myocardial infarctions and somewhat less strokes. From 30 days to one year, the event rates accrued fairly equally. And then from one year to five years, there were fewer events in patients who underwent surgery. So at the end of the day, you got to kind of the same place, but how you got there was quite different. Um, and we did uh, some uh, um, more sophisticated statistical analyses because, of course, if you're a patient, you'd rather have adverse events later rather than early. And if you look, um, patients accrued a benefit for PCI early, which lasted till about three years, and then the later events with surgery started to eat into that benefit. So at the end of the five years, there was finally a catch-up phenomenon. But for most of the five-year course, the PCI patients were free from the burden of, uh, of adverse events. There were a lot of secondary endpoints we looked at. There were some that slightly favored PCI. There were some that slightly favored surgery, but they were all relatively small in magnitude. And there were 20 secondary events we looked at and none were corrected for multiplicity. And uh, so we really have the primary endpoint to, sure. to mostly make our decisions on. And it really showed that PCI now with contemporary drug eluting stents, I think is uh, you know, an acceptable, perhaps even preferred alternative to uh, surgery for select patients, not all patients with left main disease, but again, lower intermediate risk patients where the operator feels they can get complete revascularization. And the patient importantly should be told about the pros and cons of each of the two procedures. Um, PCI being uh, easier and safer upfront, sure. but surgery still being somewhat more durable. Mm -hmm. And then the patient's own preferences have to be weighed into the mix of which procedure to choose. And I think it's a, it's a great message because, you know, it has to be individualized um, exactly. uh, to, to every patient. And again, you know, congratulations for um, presenting the data. I think um, very important for the patients that we take care of on a day-to-day on -day basis. 
Um, how would you have that conversation with the patient now? You know, if a patient who's you've just did an angiogram and has left main disease, yeah. has maybe mid RCA disease, right. um, maybe disease in one of the OMs. So sure. looks like uh, you know, so requires multiple, P, you know, multi vessel right. PCI. Right. Uh, but the syntax is you know less right. than less than or equal to thirty two. Right. What what would be the conversation? Would would that be something that you would do ad hoc, uh, or would you want to take the patient off the table? No. I I still think those kind of patients should be taken off the table. So sure. you can really, whenever there's therapeutic alternatives, we shouldn't mm -hmm. take the decision out of the patient's hands. Yeah. Because again, some patients might prefer the greater durability of surgery. And there was less repeat revascularization, about 7%, 8% absolute difference, mm -hmm. less with um, surgery compared to PCI. That might be important to some patients. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there's a lot more atrial fibrillation and more renal insufficiency and yes. other periprocedural complications. Mm -hmm. Those may be of outsized importance to some patients. Mm -hmm. So you really have to, I think, take some time um, as a practitioner, spend 30 minutes, yep. explain the differences between PCI and surgery. You've got two very good revascularization modalities. The patient needs sure. one of them mm -hmm. because otherwise their prognosis, uh, we still believe, even with the best medical therapy with high-grade left main disease is not acceptable. Sure. So the patient needs revascularization, but there's two ways to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, the patient should just understand what the pros and cons and the differences are in each, and then ultimately sure. have a very strong say mm -hmm. um, if it's an informed uh, patient in the decision. Yeah, and one more question, uh, just because I have the privilege of having you here. Sure. Um, the meeting has also presented some excellent data on safety of single antiplatelet agent. Yeah. Um, how would you extrapolate those findings into you know, for example, the Excel patient population. Yeah. So I so I really don't think you can. Yeah. I think left main disease is a very unique, and you're talking about the Twilight study, yes. which uh, showed that uh, in in a lot of patients, most of whom had ACS, uh, acute coronary syndromes, but mm -hmm. but many, many stable coronary disease patients as mm -hmm. well, that ticagrelor alone, starting at three months after stenting, was um, as effective and actually safer in terms mm -hmm. of less bleeding mm -hmm. than ticagrelor plus aspirin. Mm -hmm. So um, now most patients with left main disease who undergo PCI, the stable ones, are still treated with aspirin and clopidogrel. Mm -hmm. So we certainly can translate it to that. And of course, given left main disease, if you do have a stent thrombosis with stents in the left main, that's a potentially very concerning situation. Sure. And in fact, there was one other trial that was presented uh, you know, at this meeting, Ideal Left Main, uh, 880 patient study that randomized uh, two different drug-eluting stents, but one had four months of DAP and the other had uh, 12 months. And the four-month group had a concern, a real concerning trend towards increased MI and increased stent thrombosis rates. Mm -hmm. So I still think six months would probably be the minimum you want to do for left main stenting. And you know, six to twelve, depending on the complexity of the disease. Certainly, twelve months if it was an acute coronary syndrome. Great. And then, um, how does uh, so? Two more questions. One is uh, the you know patients with diabetes, and then the right. other question is, I know you you are a believer in intravascular imaging in yeah. appropriate stent um, you know apposition and stent sizing. Right. Um, so, if you could just talk to the audience a little bit about sure. about those two questions as well. So in Excel, with left main disease, we looked at a lot of different subgroups, and uh, there were no interactions in any of the subgroups, including diabetics. Uh, so the patients with diabetes that still had the syntax score of less than or equal to 32 did just as well with PCI compared to cabbage as the patients without diabetes. And actually, a very similar finding was made in the syntax trial, which mm -hmm. also reported the data out to 10 years now, mm -hmm. first-generation drug-eluting stents, but they also didn't find that diabetes was a risk factor, at least for left main disease patients. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you know we've got to re-examine this whole issue of of diabetes in and of itself as a risk factor if you take away the um, uh, extent of coronary disease, renal insufficiency, other comorbidities that come along with diabetes. If you just have diabetes and a few you know, relatively straightforward lesions, those patients do fine with PCI. And your second question was about you know, intravascular imaging. And yeah, I, I do, and I think many people feel very strongly that when you have complex coronary disease and therefore particularly left main disease, especially of the distal bifurcation, sure. which again, given the amount of myocardium at risk, you've really got to do a good job, that those uh, stents should be implanted with ultrasound or perhaps uh, intracoronary OCT um, uh, imaging guidance. 
And there's data to suggest that uh, adverse events and mortality are less if you do use intravascular imaging guidance for left main coronary disease. So a high percentage, almost three quarters of patients in Excel did have such guidance and that may be Wonderful. why we got as good results as we did in Excel. Yeah. Dr. Stone, thank you very much for enlightening us and congratulations again for the data. Thanks, Excellent my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.